Hey Grace Kids! Welcome to Grace Kids Online! We are so excited to see you. We're so glad that you are welcoming us into your homes. This is what you can do for us. Share, share, share. Wherever you are watching, we want you to share um, your experience with your family, with your friends. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and start a watch party if you want to. But you will be able to get notified if you do that every time we post a new video. So let's get started, all right? Yay! Yay! food, but we also can bring our friends to block parties. Now, we have learned all month long about friendship, right? And so in Proverbs 17, 17, it says, a friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. And also when we look at the bottom line, it says friends forgive each other. So what does that look like for us? Why do we forgive friends? So we're gonna go ahead and throw it to Miss Michelle. So first, we can learn how to dance mm, 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 at block parties, but also we're gonna go see Haley and see what she has to say about friends. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. Grace kids, happy Sunday. OMG, do you guys know what today is? Today is the day of the party. And as you can see behind me, I have a group of kids that I decided that they're going to be coming with me to this party. I have Sean. Sean, jump up and say hey. Hey. I have Gregly. Gregly, jump up and say hey. Hey. And I have Zinia. Zinia, jump up and say hey. What up? And I have Malia. Malia, jump up and say hey. Hi. So you guys already know what we're going to do. This whole month has been about what? Friendship. And as you guys can see, I brought my friends along to party with me. So you guys already know what to do. You guys already know what we gotta get prepared to do. We are about to get what? Gangsta for Jesus. So, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Okay, so they're ready, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Let's do this. It's worship time. We're going to a party. We're going to a party. Grace kids, you guys seem a little excited. What's going on? We're going to a party. Hey, you guys already know we are going to the party, but what do we have to do first? Everybody down to the ground. Everybody down to the ground. What's your time, is it? Worship time! Let's worship. Worship time! 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 You make the darkness run and hide. You bring the broken back to life. Only you can. Only you can. Every chain you fill my heart with songs of praise. Only you can, only you can. Jesus. 
already know what to do. Get ready for that party. Mwah. Five, five minutes on the other side and I will have the perfect imaginary burger. Hey there, Haley here. I am practicing for a cookout I'm having next week. And I'm not actually cooking anything right now. <laughs> I'm inside. That would be a cook in. <laughs> so I've never really cooked for any of my friends before, so I just wanted to be prepared because I want them to still be my friends after the cookout's over. Just kidding, that's not how friendship works. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. I don't think friends should stop being friends for little things like food tasting bad. Mmm, oh, it's delicious. And I think you can even stay friends with someone if they say, accidentally burn you with a hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, ha, 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 ha. Friendship can last through most anything. Unless a friend makes fun of my hat, then it's over. Time to flip an imaginary burger. <sighs> Woo! Today's story is about a time when one of Jesus's friends did something really bad. Jesus could have flipped out, <laughs> but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. I'll see you soon. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, can't turn the camera off with the mitts. Sorry. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. 
First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared he told three different people he wasn't Jesus' friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast the net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. Ugh. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, ten. Whoa, need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's God's son and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lappy water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Okay, so picture this. You have a best friend. You do everything together. You eat together. You play games together. You tell each other everything. And then when your life gets really hard and you need your friend there the most, your friend pretends she doesn't even know you. That's not cool, friend. Wouldn't that make you so mad? It would make me want to say goodbye to that friend forever. But Jesus didn't do that when Peter pretended not to know him. Instead, even though he must have felt so hurt inside, 
Jesus forgave Peter. Now, I know what you may be thinking. It was pretty cool for Jesus to forgive Peter like that. It was. But guess what? Jesus forgives you and me like that too. Anytime we mess up, we break a rule, or we do something we know is wrong, Jesus forgives us. That's because he loves us so much, and because our relationship is more important to him than our mess ups. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus forgives us, so we should forgive others. Our friendships should be more important than our mess ups. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive. It's not. You're going to need God's help, but get this. When you choose to forgive, it can help you feel better inside. It can help your friend feel better inside, and it'll make your cookouts way more enjoyable. <gasps> Speaking of, this imaginary corn is almost done roasting. Oh, oh look at that. Mm, oh, what? Oh, this is gonna taste so good when they're real. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, again with the mitts. Wow, Haley is so right. Our friends shouldn't not love us when we do something bad or our food doesn't taste good, right? Our friends should be there at all times. And then when we look at Peter, he said he did something bad, right? He denied Jesus three times. Not once, not twice, but three different times. And he thought, oh, for sure, Jesus is not going to love me after this. But he was wrong. Jesus said, come sit with me. And he forgave Peter with everything he had. And he said, and Jesus still loved Peter and forgave Peter. So if Jesus can forgive Peter for denying him three times, then why can't we forgive our friends? I know for Miss Looney, there are times where me and my friends get in, in disagreement and I don't even want to talk to them anymore. I'm like, ah, oh, no, I don't forgive you. But then I think about Jesus. I think about Jesus and I think about Peter and I'm like, okay, I have to go apologize. And then they apologize to me too for what they've done. And then we're best friends again, right? But we shouldn't pick and choose when to love our friends. Proverbs 17, 17 says a friend loves at all times, not just sometimes, right? And it says they are there to help when trouble comes. So they have to always be there and we always have to be a good friend too, right? Okay guys, I know sometimes it's hard to forgive our friends. But that's why we have to ask Jesus to help us forgive, just like he forgave Peter and uh, more people in the Bible. So I'm going to ask you guys to get on your knees, just like I'm going to get on my knees, okay? So close your eyes and bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, teach me how to become a better friend. Just like you forgave Peter, teach me to learn how to forgive my friends. Help me to change the way I see friendship and learn how to love all my friends. Amen. And for those who feel like they don't know Jesus or they want to know more about Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for everything you do for me. I ask that you just come into my heart today and live forever. Make a home in heaven so that I will be able to live right with you. Help me to change and become more like you. Amen. So I'm so excited. So I'm so sad that this month of block party. Choo -choo, choo -choo, choo -choo. If you know Miss Looney, Miss Looney 
cannot dance, but she loves to dance. And I'm sad, no, we can't dance. But we're gonna see Miss Michelle and she's gonna teach us some dance moves. So Miss Michelle, take it away. Bye guys. Yo, Zenya, hasn't it been an amazing month? God has. I forgot what we were learning about it. What were we learning about? Friendship. Friendship. Could we not agree that we could all worship together? And we all have the same best friend. And who's your best friend? Jesus! Yes. So, yo, great kids. What, what time is it? I, I don't know. Gregory, what time is it? I don't know. What time is it? Malia, what time is it? Zenia, what time is it? You already know, it's worship time. Grace kids, you already know what it do. Everybody down to the ground. One, two, three, what time is it? Worship time! Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I know someone who makes me happy. I know someone who makes me dance. He's the reason my feet are moving He's the reason I'm gonna lift my hands and clap Clap, clap to the sound Jump, yeah. jump up and down Spin, spin, spin all around I'm singing it out One, two, three, four Jesus is the very best friend The very best friend That's a wrap. It is Sunday done. Block party is done. Wait, did I forget to tell you? It's not done. Oh my gosh. We're having a party at two o'clock right here in the parking lot. Don't forget to come, okay? We're having an ice cream party and it's just for you. Elementary and preschool are coming together for a, a big event in our parking lot. We're gonna bring ice cream right to your car and we're gonna love on you and we can't wait to see you. So come on down and visit us, right? We'll see you at two o'clock. It's gonna be an amazing time. And then wait till you hear next month's theme. It's called Offstage. 
We're talking about integrity. What does that look like? I cannot wait for you to see what we have planned for October for you. And I think there's gonna be some really exciting news coming really, really soon. I want you guys to get excited about that, okay? Let's have a good time together in the parking lot celebrating Jesus and celebrating you because I love you and Jesus loves you and let's continue to grow in grace. Now remember, I'll see you in small groups in a little while. So get into those small group classrooms because I'm gonna be right there with you. Let's have a good time together learning more about what God has to say about friendship. See you real soon. Mwah. Love you.